Good day everyone. I am Eduardo M. Cabalong Jr. of Mindanao State University Graduate School. Currently, I am a senior high school science teacher and a division spotter in the Department of Education, General Santos City Division. Mindanao State University Graduate School is located at J.P. Laurel Avenue, the Jungas North, General Santos City. Mindanao State University is one of the state universities of the Philippines with the aim of providing for the different strategic locations across the island of Mindanao. It has a special mandate of integrating the cultural communities in Mindanao into the mainstream of the nation's social, cultural, and political life by providing them with opportunities for quality and relevant public education. Join me in exploring my study entitled Inquiry-Based Learning as a Strategy in Teaching Earth and Life Science among Grade 11 Learners. Inquiry-Based Learning is a pedagogy that enables the learners in experiencing the processes of knowledge creation and learn through inquiry. It is a student-centered approach which allows learners to learn at their own pace. In this type of strategy, learners will develop through research skills and eventually will become lifelong learners. It makes the learners questions, ideas, and observations being the center of the learning process. Inquiry-based could enhance student engagement, academic achievement, and development of higher order thinking skills. Teaching science education is not an easy task for a science teacher. It requires hard work, dedication, long study hours, and mastery of the concepts to be presented. In the current status of science education, teaching science subjects must incorporate contemporary teaching or learning methods which reduce the gap between the knowledge taught in school and those obtained from different information sources. That is according to Dodik 2010. With this, it is essential to look for an innovative teaching or learning methods that are more effective in science education and could increase the learner's participation and motivation making it fun and rewarding. This study employed the quasi-experimental research. There were 60 grade 11 learners from the two classes. One class was designated as the control group and the other class was the experimental group. The selection as to what group of learners constituted the experimental and control group was made through tossing a coin. The experimental group consisted of 30 learners were taught daily using the 5E model of inquiry-based learning as a strategy. The earth and life science classes were done for one hour every day. The control group consisted of 30 learners were taught daily on the concepts of earth and life science using the traditional chalk and board method. The subject was done for one hour every day. The pre-test of 35 questions was given before the experiment to both the experimental and control group. The 35 item test was distributed into 60% for easy questions, 30% for average questions, and 10% for difficult questions. Learners were given 60 minutes to answer the test. Employing new teaching style and approach is essential to the student to comprehend the lesson better and learn how to think critically about any problem or task presented. For these reasons, the researcher wanted to investigate the effectiveness of employing inquiry-based learning strategy 
in teaching earth and life science among grade 11 learners. This study aimed to find out the effectiveness of using inquiry-based learning as a strategy in teaching earth and life science. Specifically, the researcher wanted to answer the following research questions. First, what is the performance level of grade 11 learners in earth and life science in the experimental group and control group before the start of the study? Second, is there a significant difference in the pre-test mean scores of the experimental group and the control group in earth and life science? Third, is there a significant difference in the pre-test and post-test scores in earth and life science among learners under the experimental group? Fourth, is there a significant difference in the pre-test and post-test scores in earth and life science among learners under the control group? And the fifth one, is there a significant difference in the mean gain scores in earth and life science between the experimental group and the control group. If the frequency, percentage, and t-test for independent and dependent variables were used to analyze the data at 0.05 level of significance. Based on the data being shown, 37 or 61.6% of the grade 11 learners got the score ranging from 8 to 14 wherein their academic performance is considered poor. This is followed by 16 or 26.7% of grade 11 learners who got a scores ranging from 15 to 21 out of 35 correct answers. These learners' academic performance was considered fair. There were 7 or 11.7% of the learners who got a scores ranging from 0 to 7 which is considered very poor. No learners got a scores ranging from 22 to 28 and 29 to 35 in the pre-test. The data being shown revealed that the grade 11 learners had poor academic performance in earth and life science at the start of the study. The control group composed of 30 grade 11 learners got a pre-test mean score of 12.03 in earth and life science. The experimental group obtained a pre-test mean score of 11.97 in earth and life science. Based on the t-test for independent samples, the t-value is 0.067 and the p-value is 0.947. Since p is greater than 0.5, there is no significant difference in the pre-test means the two groups. The result implies that at the onset of the study, both the control group and the experimental group have poor level of academic performance in earth and life science. Thus, there is no bias in the grouping of learners in the two groups since they both have an equivalent academic performance and the experiment proceeded. Table 3 shows that the experimental group obtained a pre-test mean score of 11.97. After 8 weeks of teaching earth and life science, using inquiry-based learning approach, the experimental group got a post-test mean score of 21.13, which is higher compared to the pre-test mean. Comparing the pre-test and the post-test mean scores using t-test, the obtained t-value is 10.307 and the p-value is 0. Since p is lesser than 0.05, then the difference between the pre-test and the post-test is significant. This means that the performance of the grade 11 learners in earth and life science has significantly improved when they were taught using the inquiry-based learning approach. The control group got a pre-test mean score of 12.03 at the start of the study. After being taught in earth and life science, employing the traditional method for 8 weeks, 
the group got a post-test mean score of 17.77, higher than the pre-test mean score. Using p-test for dependent samples, the p-value is 6.951 and the p-value is 0. Since p is lesser than 0.05, there is a significant difference between the pre-test and the post-test mean scores of the control group. This means that there was also an improvement in the academic performance of grade 11 learners in the control group who were taught using the traditional method of instruction, although lesser compared to the experimental group. The control group obtained a mean gain score of 5.73 this is significantly lower than the mean gain score of the exper experimental group, which is 9.17. Comparing the two mean gain scores using p-test, the resulting p-value of 2.831 yields a p-value of 0 0.006. Since p is lesser than 0 0.05, then there is a significant difference in the mean gain scores of the two groups. It means that the experimental group which employed inquiry-based learning as teaching method had a greater improvement in learning earth and life science than the control group, which used the traditional method of teaching. The higher mean gain scores of the experimental group shows that the grade 11 learners had better academic performance in earth and life science when they were taught using the inquiry-based learning approach. Based on the findings of the study, the grade 11 learners have a poor performance in earth and life science at the start of the study. For this reason, a need for academic intervention is necessary to improve their performance. The control group and the experimental group are equivalent in their initial knowledge of earth and life science. Thus, there was no bias in the grouping of subjects in this study. The use of inquiry-based approach helped the learners understand and learn better concepts presented in Earth and Life Science. The traditional method also helped the learners to understand Earth and Life Science but not as significant compared to those being taught using the inquiry-based learning strategy. Based on the findings and conclusions of the study, the school, particularly the principal and the school head, must provide support and training for the teachers in employing inquiry-based learning approach as a strategy in teaching earth and life science. It can be integrated during the lab session and have someone demonstrated the said strategy to the teachers. The teachers then must provide instructional materials and promote cooperative learning activities to their learners to make their class interesting. The teacher must engage the learners to participate actively and must integrate the inquiry-based learning strategy using the 5 e learning method to enhance students' learning. Lastly, the future researchers may replicate this study using another learning areas in science and other stem track academic core subjects the result of this study can help the learners in understanding science concepts easily by developing their practical cognitive and critical thinking skills using discovery in a real situation also, it would encourage them to participate actively and make the learning teaching process more interesting, fun, and meaningful. It is beneficial to teacher in using inquiry-based learning while teaching their learners different science concepts. This strategy could also be used even with the other pedagogical strategy that they already practice. It might help them to encourage their teachers in using inquiry-based learning as a strategy in teaching earth 
and life science to provide quality education to our senior high school learners for the principal. Once again, I am Eduardo Maca Cabanga Jr. of Mindanao State University, General Santos City. Thank you very much for listening.